Rent prices are soaring. The housing market's out of control. Now we're starting to see the same thing happen with rental rates. What's going on? What's causing this? And will this continue? Hey, it's Jeremy. Welcome back to my channel. I've created a passive income stream of over $55,000 a month in rental property income. My portfolio is worth over $7.5 million. I bought a house or two a year while working a full-time job, and on my channel, I'm going to show you how you can do it too. Oh, and although I'm a licensed CPA and have three business degrees, I'm just a guy on YouTube, so be sure to consult your professional before making any investment decisions. Each time you smash the like button and leave a comment, you'll be entered to win a pair of Apple AirPod Pros. I post weekly, so be sure to hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you'll know when the next video is out. Alright guys, I want to show you a great video from Graham Stephan, who's one of my favorite YouTubers, and he's a huge inspiration for making this channel. What's up Graham, it's Guys here. So here's the deal. It's no surprise that right now, the real estate market is absolutely ridiculous. We're seeing some of the highest prices on record, inventory is non-existent, and from the outside looking in, it appears to be the exact worst time to go and buy real estate. After all, the famous quote, be greedy when others are fearful, is pretty much the exact opposite of what's happening right now, while buyers are practically foaming at the mouths to buy any house they can with four walls and running water. But even though the entire landscape of real estate has fundamentally changed throughout the last year, the market is beginning to flip. And instead of property values rising faster than you could blink, the next big change is probably a topic that a lot of people are largely overlooking for some reason, and that would be rising rents. Reports are now highlighting an extreme disconnect between rents and home prices. While rents for single-family homes see their largest gain in nearly 15 years, the LA Times brace people to expect rental prices to rise, national rent growth is already approaching a 5% increase from a year ago, and starting now, a rental rebound is beginning to take shape across the entire country. So we got to talk about exactly what's going on, what this means, and what you could do about it, because whether you're renting, owning, investing, or even living in your mother's basement, most likely this is going to impact you in one way or another. I've definitely seen this in my market. I actually track my rental prices and rental rates. Every time I get a vacancy, I'm able to increase my rates. Anything that costs more, if you consume it, you're going to pay a higher price for it. The cost of an existing property with an existing landlord might seem pretty flat to you. With the exception of the increase in the cost to insure a house that's now worth more, it then costs more to insure that property in case it burns down or gets hit by a tornado. Also, property tax assessments are increasing as values are worth more. Inflation is happening with everything in the market. The cost of contractors and repair as well as materials. All those things are causing things to go up for existing landlords on existing properties. And then if you buy a new property and rent it out, obviously the cost to acquire that is much higher, and so the rents will need to be higher to cover those costs. All right, so here's some background about what's going on, because I gotta say, what's happening in the rental market is completely different from skyrocketing real estate values. See, typically rental prices stay fairly stable, regardless of how the overall market performs. For example, as we can see here, throughout the last 40 years, even throughout several real estate boom and busts, rent only ever briefly sputtered in 2009 before quickly resuming their upward trend. But COVID was a little bit different. During the shutdown, rents were hit especially hard. Throughout almost every major city throughout the U.S., rents began to decline as tenants lost their jobs, were unable to pay, and landlords chose to accept whatever they could for fear of holding on to a vacant unit. Not to mention, rent strikes took place around the country. Nearly a third of tenants said they couldn't afford to make their payments, and rental discounts were everywhere for a qualified tenant looking to move in immediately. But something interesting was happening. While rental prices were going down, housing values were going up. The fact that rents and housing values were moving in opposite directions was unprecedented, and in some areas, the discrepancy was just too big not to notice. For example, in San Jose, home prices rose 14%, but the area's rents fell 7%. The same thing also occurred throughout the nation's richest cities, from Seattle, New York, Boston, Austin, San Francisco, Washington, Los Angeles, and Chicago. Meanwhile, however, housing values were rising at their fastest pace in history, and rents have overall declined until now. Today, rents are rising at their fastest pace in history, up 7.1% in Atlanta, 10% in San Diego, and get this, 17.3% in Las Vegas. Which With the pandemic going on last year, I did not increase the rates of my current tenants. When houses came vacant, I did raise it. However, this past spring, I did increase the rates on most of my properties with my existing tenants, simply to keep up with the rising cost of insurance, taxes, repairs, appliances, and labor. Why is this happening and how much higher can rents go? Well, first, we got to talk about why this is happening. And one of the most obvious reasons is that one, people are outpriced by rising home values and they're forced to rent instead. 
That's caused rental prices to spike upwards as soon as the economy began reopening. And we're on track to continue even further as long as home values continue to rise. Higher property values indirectly push up the cost of rent. That's because in order for it to make financial sense to rent out a home, the rent needs to be enough to cover the minimum overhead associated with ownership. For example, at minimum, it needs to be able to cover insurance, property taxes, maintenance, and repairs, and that's even before it needs to cover the mortgage. Then you have the mortgage on top of it. You have the opportunity cost of investing your money elsewhere. You have the time management to make sure everything is operable. And you have the risk that the tenant won't just stop paying their rent. And as their own costs go up, that usually ends up being passed down to the tenant in the form of higher rent. Now, fourth, we're just starting to see higher rents as tenant leases are expiring from a year ago. Across the board, it seems like pandemic pricing is really coming to an end as tenant leases are expiring and they have to prepare for higher costs. Generally, rent increases are going to be realized on a year-over-year -year basis as lease agreements expire. So it would make sense that now rents are going back up and tend to reflect what another person is willing to pay. If fifth, the extension of an eviction memorandum means that less inventory gets added to the market, further worsening the existing supply. So when these tenants that haven't been able to pay rent finally get evicted and those houses come back on the market, those landlords are going to be able to re-rent the properties at today's values, which are going to increase from where they were. That'll be good news for the landlord to try to make some additional revenue on that property for the several months or a couple years maybe that he's not been receiving all or some of his rent. But it's also going to increase the average price of rental property. So the eviction moratorium is about to end at the end of this month in July. So stay tuned for an update on that. And as long as home values continue going Going up, this could very well be the beginning for rental prices. Sign a long-term lease. If you know you're going to be living in the same spot and you're happy where you are, see if your landlord would agree to keep the same rent if you don't move. So I specialize in single-family homes and almost all of my leases are one-year terms and they automatically renew on their anniversary for another full year term and the turnover is what's really expensive. I actually put a clause in mind that gives me the right to increase rent by say 2.9 or 3.9 percent and I tell them that rents have been going up a lot in this really protects them. And if my tenants stay there and I just increase it that, I'm happy with that because my costs are relatively flat since I've got a mortgage locked in. Well, I offered a discount to a tenant who does all the landscaping themselves. Typically, this is a service that I was paying $100 a month for, but if the tenant wants to do it themselves and save the extra money, I'm all for it. And on single family homes, I always require the tenant to take care of the landscaping. The most efficient landlords price their rentals just under market value so they can rent it as fast as possible and have their selection of best tenants. Zillow seems to have higher quality tenants, I'll have 10 people actually fully apply that I can look at and interview to be the best fit for my property. I have them lined up with the next tenant before the other one moves out. I ask the tenant who's leaving if I can show it to a few good tenants where I pay them $25 to show it to a few people for me, or if they happen to be leaving early, they'll do that for me so that I'll let them out of the lease as soon as the other person takes over. And I won't lose a single day's rent oftentimes. A lot of people don't think that's possible, but I promise it is. Usually those listings are gone within about 12 to 24 hours, so the sooner you find one, the more likely you are to get one. I also highly recommend looking through unorthodox places like Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace because there's a higher likelihood that you're just going to get a mom and pop renter who puts up their place at a really good deal because they don't want the hassle of keeping it empty. And I'd say also you got to be careful with some of those less well-known places. You'll find people that prey on ma and pa landlords to take advantage of them who have maybe criminal histories or eviction histories. And fifth, you got to know the market and what's available. In this case, education is your best defense to rising rental rates. And if you know what else is on the market and what your place is worth, you're going to be able to better negotiate the terms. In the Zillow Rental Manager app, when you list your property, you can go down and see comparable properties around your property that are for rent or were for rent, and it'll help you compare the amount of rent that you're asking relative to similar properties. What most people don't understand is that renting is very much a high overhead business, and it's especially common for small mom and pop landlords to barely cover their overhead costs, let alone any profit. That is so true. Early on, a lot of mom and pas just make a couple hundred dollars more above the expenses for cash flowing. Most of my properties that I bought were like that in the beginning. And if you have a $6,000 heating and air replacement like I had last week, it's going to be two and a half years before you even break even with that. But over time, as you hold the property, your rents will increase, although your costs will stay relatively flat. So a lot of those properties that I've had for 10 years, that $200 a month positive cash flow has turned into 500 or 600 or 700. The key is to making sure it cash flows on the front end instead of just speculating, hoping that the 
property is going to increase in value over time or the rents are going to go up. So just like everything else going up in cost, most likely it's inevitable that rental increases will continue to be even more common. At this point, it's extremely difficult to find a good deal when you're competing mm -hmm. with owner users who plan to move in themselves. I tell newbies, make sure it cash flows. All right, I want to show you a couple of clips from this Bigger Pockets video. According to Zillow's Observed Rent Index, the median rent in the U.S. jumped 1.8% from May to June and grew a huge 7% year over year, which is the highest growth rate since Zillow started tracking this data. It's also worth noticing that a lot of this growth has come recently with rents rising over 5% just since March. The median rent in the US now sits at just about 1800 bucks per month and what this means for real estate investors. First and foremost is inflation. So I'm not sure if you heard, but if you follow really <laughs> any sort of news, you probably have heard that inflation is up right now. And although it's still unclear if this inflationary period is temporary. Inflation is here to stay, I promise you. The trillions of dollars pumping into the U.S. economy that have increased the national debt by about 22 or more percent in less than about a year have to cause massive inflation. And everybody feels it. All the price increases you see around you, that's what inflation feels like. That trend is going to continue for a while. Rents grew 7% year over year, while housing prices grew 20 5% year over year. So I've seen several different numbers from several different sources and they vary a lot, but they're all big numbers. Until rent growth outpaces property value growth, we're not likely to see an environment where a ton of cash flowing properties come on the market. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, if you're a prospective investor and you can find cash flowing deals where the numbers work, you may want to lock it in right now because buying conditions, in my opinion at least, are not likely to improve, at least in the coming and months. If you want to buy a property for an investment, just make sure it cash flows. As the cost of housing goes up, the cost of renting those houses will follow. And even if we see a softening of the housing market or the plateauing of the market, rents will still continue to follow that until they meet that same curve. So if housing prices cool off over the next year, I think we'll continue to see rents follow that for another year or so. Plus, if it's cash flowing now and rents continue to rise, your cash flow will grow over time. Good while point. your biggest expense, your mortgage, stays the same. Yep. Right? You can lock in your mortgage right now, right. and that payment is always going to stay the same price. And if rents keep growing at 7%, even if housing prices are growing faster, you have locked in your mortgage payment, and rents will continue to grow and improve your cash flow over time. That That's something beginner investors should realize. You get these 30-year mortgages only if you live in the house. So if you can live in a house and then rent it out or get that quadplex and live in one and then rent it out, you can actually keep that mortgage for 30 years and your costs will basically be fixed. Most of your costs will be fixed. And rents will continue to grow and improve your cash flow over time. The number of borrowers in forbearance has dropped yet again this time a huge amount down to 3.5% of all loans. And, that and the administration just today announced a new program to help people who may otherwise go into foreclosure. It provides some additional reliefs like reducing their payments by 25% or letting them automatically qualify for a brand new loan at today's current rates and also extending that for another 30 years. It's gonna be good for the economy because it'll provide more stability. Here's a quick clip from CNBC. An update on the housing market with home prices at record highs. Demand for single-family rental homes is soaring, and so are the rents. Single-family rents were up 5.3% in April. That's the largest gain in nearly 15 years. Largest gain of rent increases in the last 15 years. Wow. Rents for single-family detached homes, as opposed to townhomes, we're up even higher, 7.9. Did you catch that? Single family homes are up even highest. That's the highest segment of the real market that's making the most increases right now. And luckily, that's what I specialize in. So sure is nice to be lucky sometimes, right? As millennials in particular seek more outdoor space. The rise in rents came across all categories, although higher priced homes saw the biggest percentage jump. There's a whole move afoot in certain parts of the country in early July and then in terms of getting back to the office. And then there's going to be sort of a second push, which might even be bigger post Labor Day. My view is that by Christmas, even the hybrid work thing is going to be over. The world will back to a sort of four or five day a week situation. I found an article from CoreLogic, single family rent growth rate more than doubles. 
year over year in April. Nationally, rent growth exceeded pre-pandemic rates across all price tiers, including low-end rentals for the first time. That's a good point. A lot of landlords like myself didn't increase rents last year. And this article also highlights the fact that single-family homes have seen significantly more increases than anywhere else in the rental market. As millennials continue to age, they're wanting to live in single-family homes, putting pressure on this market segment, again, leading to largest annual increase in 15 years. So the higher-end homes had the most increase. So here's a great chart on the National Single Family Rent Index year-over-year -year increase, and you can see it spiking since COVID. Here they show some of the top markets with the highest increases year-over-year. -year. We see some of the common areas that are typically booming, Phoenix, Las Vegas, Tucson, Austin, Dallas, Charlotte. Oh, Atlanta. Atlanta is in my neck of the woods only a couple of hours away. Oh, and right next to it, this is interesting, it shows the median price of a single family home for those markets. So Atlanta, $15.69. That's definitely near where my median price houses are in my portfolio. This next chart is on single family attached and detached. So attached meaning like condos and townhouses and detached is just a house by itself. I'm so happy to be in this space right now. A couple things from an article in the Washington Post. Rent prices are soaring as Americans flock back to cities. 33% increase in some cities. Of course, those cities dropped their prices way down during COVID and then now they're kind of coming back. The economy is starting to reopen. People are going back to the cities. Nationwide rent prices are up 7.5% so far this year, which is three times higher than the normal, according to apartments.com. Analysts expect prices to keep climbing for the foreseeable future, and so do I. They think increases are going to continue at least for the next 12 to 18 months. Here it is again. Demand for two particular types of rentals is especially high. Single-family homes, and apartments in smaller cities. Rents for single family homes are growing at the fastest pace in 15 years. Rental listings are getting like a dozen applications. I find that true in my market. People are calling and offering to pay more than the stated rent amount and bidding the prices up. I haven't had that, but I've had people offer to pay several months in advance. When I recently increased rents, people were very happy and pleased that I only raised them two or 3%. Oh, something else that you're hearing in the news, you know, Wall Street is also taking notice of high demand and low supply in the rental market and the potential profits, right? You heard Graham talk about that. You've also heard about these private equity firms. Blackstone recently purchased Home Partners of America, which manages about 17,000 rental homes for about $6 million. And JP Morgan Asset Management and American Homes for Rent announced a deal last year to build more rental homes targeting the West and the Southeast. Historically, Wall Street has been out of the rental market and in recent times, they've been aggressively investing in the real estate market and in the rental space. Most economists and investors predict high demand for rentals for months to come. That's likely to push up inflation since rent makes up about 40% of the consumer price index. But experts think it could rise all summer and fall. All these increases and in everything is simply inflation. All the money that the federal government has pumped into the system with these relief packages. Bloomberg Wealth. Soaring U.S. rents are sticky inflation with staying power. Summer lease renewals will lock many into bigger monthly bills. The median national rent climbed 9.2% in the first half of 2021. Part of that reflects an increase of a bounce back in prices that were dropped earlier in the pandemic, so it's not as bad as it sounds. However, rents are higher than they would have been otherwise. This black line starts out at actual rent prices. Where it's pink here, this is the normal path of increases that we most likely would have seen without the pandemic. What actually happened was that they kind of softened and they came down as landlords dropped the price and some of the places inside a city had to come down to keep renters in there. But then you can see a massive spike and we've actually crossed the line of where they would have been otherwise. So this is true inflation in rent prices. Here you have the New York Fed and Fannie Mae suggesting that rents may increase by another 7 to 10 percent in the coming years. And rent prices are pretty sticky. They go up and stay up. They don't come down quickly like the lumber fall. Home prices jumped the most in 30 years in the last 12 months, or about 15%. That translates into about a $45,000 gain for the typical homeowner. One crazy thing that's going on is that renters typically make about half the income as homeowners. And homeowners have been refinancing their houses at historically low rates and actually reducing their monthly cost for living in a house. So renters who make half the income of homeowners have been having to spend and continue to spend more of their income on their houses than they have had in the past. Your typical tenant is getting about $100 a month increase in their rent. I did not raise my tenant's rent that much, I promise you. Each time you smash the like button and leave a comment, you'll be entered to win a pair of AirPod Pros that Lily is giving away. We post weekly, so be sure to hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you'll know when the next video is out. Thank you for watching and supporting the channel. I hope you have a great week.